Yak Gadget, made in America, based outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Yak Gadget offers all kinds of storage accessories, quick mount motor mounts, anchor systems, track mounted accessories, even paddles. Go to yakgadget.com and get your kayak decked out for your next trip out on the water. The 153 Bay Company, based in Troy, Ohio, make everything from plastics to custom painted hard baits. Hook them hard and hook them off. All of our baits are made to order and all of our hard baits are hand painted to order. So go to the153anglers.com to place your order today. To hell and back is in the job description. Being roughed up, scuffed up, run over, kicked, thrown, dropped, dunked, and done the unthinkable is a duty we've embraced for more than 40 years. Through superior engineering and constant innovation, only Pelican has conquered the chaos a life of ambition can dish out. And we've done it to empower you. Welcome to the Reel Down on Paddle and Fin with your hosts, Dan Perry and Jimmy Skinner, where we talk about everything with tournament kayak fishing. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Reel Down on Paddling Finn, uh, your source for everything tournament kayak fishing. What hey, up? What's up, man? No, Still dead. Stay awake. Every, every time I see that background, I, I'm about to upgrade mine. My, my... I'm going to speed mine up. We're going we're gonna to get hype. Yeah, it's like a party. <laughs> it's a podcast party back there. <laughs> okay. It's not working. Oh, here we go. If you're if you're just listening, Jimmy has like a, a disco lights behind his TV. It's a very yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put a uh, seizure warning if I keep it like that. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> What's up, dude? Brian, What's up, man? I got, we got to hang out this weekend. We went fishing finally. Pickwick. Yeah. And it was absolutely terrible. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't great. At, you know, you got to run. I haven't been up there in a year. You really just got to figure out what's going on. And I mean, we we caught some fish. I had yeah. literally a personal my personal best smallmouth came up. It came up out of the water the first time. It was like a a damn piece of plywood. It was so wide. It's like, good God, what is this? Because at first I thought it was a drum. It didn't really shake, and then. And now I realize, oh, Lord, those bass come out of the water a second time, spit the bait at me, and I just cried for a minute. I hate I missed it, but you gave me some information on a creek, and I went to find that said creek, and I found it. And I can't wait to, like, I didn't really, we were at the end of the day, and it was hot as crap, and I was just kind of almost over it already. But there were fish in the area, the water was kind of stagnant, really warm, but I think uh, we get a little rain. That's a place I'm going to keep in mind. So I appreciate it. But yeah, we went out there. You were going to teach me offshore fishing. And that just, it wasn't the bite that was on. We yeah. we definitely, it wasn't for a lack of trying because we went out there. If, if we would have tried more spots, I mean, you know, Pickwick tournament coming up. So starting to, you know, a couple of them this year, but starting to spend some time up there. And the first offshore spot wasn't on, but we found, you know, found some fish. I had like an 18 come off and, that big and caught some a 15 and some other. We, I got a bunch of bites. It was just, they were not committing. Yeah. It was, it was okay. To, yeah, it was a good start, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're thinking about, you know, you've only got a little bit longer to sign up for a Pickwick tournament on bass. I, I think the shutoff is the 8th, June 8th. So yeah, if, if you're in offshore fishing, but the good thing about Pickwick is it's so long. And there's a lot of scanty water. There's plenty of creeks to fish. There's plenty of grass coming up, submergent and emergent. So you can fish grass. You can fish rocks. I mean, what, whatever you're into, Pickwick's one of those places where you can just kind of do what you want to do. There's plenty of docks. Uh, and a lot of people are going to go out and fish the tail race behind the Wilson Dam. And there's a good chance that'll be a place it'll want. It'll be one. But, you know, you're going to have to go up there and compete for fish. But it's it's a tail race on Tennessee River. There's you know there's yeah. there's, there's always big fish up there. So. Yeah, and it covers a lot of shoreline, dude. There's especially with them, like with our local trail, nobody ever really pushes the limit of going up where it tails off in Tennessee. 
you know, we keep it in our state, you know, with these two tournaments coming up, you can kind of do both. So a lot yeah. of water will get covered. Bash, you can have a motor, so you'll be able to get up to the tail race. Hobie, it, that'd be a lot tougher. Great news. I didn't melt my motor. It turned back on when I got home. So, woo. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, tonight, we, uh, besides talking about our little fishing adventure, we have the three ran- winners from the Hobie BOS on, uh, where was it? Lake Champlain. Lake Champlain. Yeah, Champlain. Yeah. So uh, it's, that's, yeah, it's the. It's that's the all Champlain I can think about, Champagne. <laughs> yeah. Popping so, bottles. Yeah. Some play had one's bucket list lakes and they got to fish it and did great top three. So uh, let's bring them on. First place, we have Travis, Vaughn, Newman. Uh, Smalley's rule. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Second place, Drew Gregory, as <laughs> always. Dude's just an absolute, so consistent. And uh, Catherine Field. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm happy for all y'all, but I'm more excited that Catherine got third place. I'm just going to throw it out there. I've been following Catherine for so long. It was so sick to see that. Well, dude, listen, I'm equally as excited for Catherine getting third, but I'm most excited that I beat her by one spot since she challenged me on the, the happy birthday 600 episode and she wanted to beat me. So that's where I'm excited that she Drew. motivated me hard enough to just barely get there. Drew, I was close. I was one spot ahead of you on day two. You were, Ooh. you were, you were, you were, you were a quarter inch uh, ahead of me on day two. And that is, uh, that is to be commended right there. But Travis, yeah. Travis, you know, Travis got us all and, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, it was all about him, man. And I'm, I'm really happy for him. He's a <laughs> friend of mine I've known for a while. So congrats, Travis. Hey, yeah. thanks, man. There you he, go. So, he uh, smoked all of us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, uh, you was, correct me if I'm wrong. You were wire to wire winner, weren't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. I, I tried to keep up with it, but I, you know, I ADD out, so I kind of like forgot. <laughs> but <laughs> well, for, for every time I looked, you were there, so good job. Well, uh, well, uh, we've had Catherine and Drew on the show before, but uh, Travis, we'll give you a chance. Tell it by who you are and how you got into kayak fishing and what you do whenever you are fishing. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, 29. I'm I'm from Ohio, uh, Dayton originally. I'm in Columbus right now. Uh, I you know started wading rivers when I was younger as a kid, got, got really into fishing, you know, in college with our, the Ohio university fishing club, uh, where on a spring break trip, I actually discovered the river bass and tournament trail. There was a tournament going on down in Florida on a spring break trip we took. And, uh, from there I got really into, uh, tournament kayak fishing. That was really my, my intro into competitive fishing um was fishing the river bass and tournament trail there from like 2015 to 2018 um there was a a three-year stretch where i was in the top 10 in the river basser of the year standings at the end of the year so i i I fished that trail really hard so uh thanks to drew if it it wasn't for drew gregory i uh i don't know if i would have found a a tournament kayak fishing um so uh so yeah that's really that's really my pretty much all I've done fishing wise. I've done a KBF event like here and there since then. And uh, this was my first Hobie event. Um, it, it made it on my schedule cause I was born in Plattsburgh, New York. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Kind of a, kind of a destination. I actually did fish a, a college FLW tournament there as well. Um, but yeah, in terms of fishing, that's pretty much it. I, I work for the Ohio department of health uh, here in Columbus. So so I'm going to say something right now because it got brought up in our uh, the 600th episode on the birthday show. I feel like Ohio is like kind of under the radar with some kick-ass <laughs> anglers. Everybody <laughs> talks about Texas and Florida and Tennessee. But the Ohio guys, especially this year, I feel like have just really showed out. Like I didn't even realize you were from Ohio until just now. And it's just another name on the list, dude. Like everybody needs to watch about- out. And, and then Drew moved up there. I moved right. up there. I mean, think about it. Kurt Smith, Siddiqui, uh, Matt Ball, me, Travis, uh, Ken Morris, who I do, you know hosts the podcast with me, Hooked on Wild Waters. Dr. Know, yeah, he's, he's a good dude, and is, uh, he won a tournament earlier this year, KBF tournament. I'm trying to think who else. We're, we're missing other people I know, so I'm someone's going to like. And, and but, like Brian said in our, our episode, man, like with our trail series, uh, the Ohio guys out of everybody have been following it the hardest. They bring like an army of guys and they always show up and show mm-hmm. out, man. It, and everybody knows the yeah. names you just said. It's, you just don't think about where they're from. Everybody, yeah. like when you hear like Guillermo and the Texas Anglers or like uh, 
like Russ and the Tennessee guys, like you think about where they're from, but the Ohio thing just kind of slips under the radar. So <laughs> I definitely don't think it will for much longer though. And, and you have pros from there too, the Shryox and um, who's the the heavy set swim jig guy? He he won an event earlier this year. Uh, L- Lowen, uh, Bill Lowen. Yeah, that's true. Originally from Ohio, it's hard to remember who's originally from Ohio in the bass boat world because they've all moved somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but Frank Frank Scalish lives up here. He was a Bassmaster Elite Series pro for a while. Um, and then there's somebody else too that was uh, big. But anyway, there's. There's, there's definitely quite a few, but they, they tend to move. If they actually go full-time actual pro pro, they tend to move, you know, out of Ohio, but yeah, lots of good ones. Well, All I, right. Yeah, kind of what Travis said, and, and we've never really talked about this, but since he said that, you know, that you doing river bass and I mean, you made it, you got him into the sport. I mean, you were one of the reasons for it. Whenever you look back, I mean, you're obviously one, you know, one of the biggest names in sport, and you've been doing this for so long, and we're all grateful for the leaders, you know, you, Chad, and everybody else who's done so much for us. How, how do you how do you feel about that? Like, you've been doing it, you, you know, you've had your own boat. You're kind of pushing the envelope of what a professional kayak angler can be and, and, and thinking about it and everything we hear you say about, you know, moving the sport forward. Whenever you look back on it, you've had your own show. You've done all these cool things. It, how, I mean, how do you feel about the sport, yeah. where it is, and, and how you've done? You know, I mean, it's 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 pretty cool. I mean, obviously, that's that was my goal with River Bass and to get people into the sport. And it's not really so much getting them into the sport. It's like I think about it like this. Um, I think about it like what did it do to me when I found kayak fishing um, to explore the wild places? You know, the rivers that. Uh, Travis and I love to fish, you know, the river bass and style. It's literally saved my life from, you know, getting into who knows what I could have gotten into from the ages of like 18 to 35. Uh, when I met my wife, which by the way, the other day on the OG show, she actually did eventually say, you know what? I think you were right. I, it was 35, <laughs> not 34. So anyway, but don't tell her I corrected you guys in the podcast, but she did admit that I was probably right. So anyway, it, from eight, 18 to like 35, all I did was like, you just be obsessed with fishing and, and fishing rivers and kayaks because I, I kind of, I got into the kayak, which is the best tool for the river. So, I mean, who knows what else a single guy with, you know what I mean? Nothing else going on would have done with his life. So it really helps help me, you know, get focused in God's creation in the outdoors and just be grounded and gave me something to do that had a lot of positive, as you guys know, the kayak fishing community is very positive vibes and the river bass and guys are the same way so all like-minded folks. So it just really was good for me. And I said to myself, how can I not share this? You know what I mean? If this can help others, how can I not share it? So I started that river bass and trail and I just kind of push, push things. YouTube did whatever I did somehow ended up obviously with Jackson uh, and getting a signature, signature series kayak and all that. I'm just happy that Travis and other people that, that did come into this for, from river bass and, and from an influence of mine, I'm just really cool that like, he's doing well now and he's still into it, loves it. And, you know, and it, it's just cool that, man, it was all, it was really worth it, you know, cause the hardest part about stopping running that trail was honestly just the award ceremony, being able to give somebody, put smiles on people's faces, memories in their, in their lives. That was the hardest part about giving it up. Mm-hmm. So it's just cool that it, it just continues on. And uh, on stage, RJ Hoover this past weekend talked about, you know, he gave thanks to Mike Iconelli who was there in the top uh, 10% as well. And uh, it just made me think. And then Travis gets up there and, and he's thanking me for, you know, starting that trail. And I was like, man, that's pretty cool that now I kind of see like in the perspective because I can influence me too. You know what I mean? How many of us haven't been influenced yeah. by Mike Iconelli? Yeah. Right. So it was really cool to, to hear people saying that about me and that, you know, no one, no one, people haven't forgotten about the River Bassin Tournament Trail that did run for 10 years. That was the very first tournament trail to ever do live scoring, you know, with a phone. I mean, our first sponsor was Bass Pro Shops, and man, I could go on, but I want to make this more about Travis uh, and and Kate to have her time. But I could go on and on about how crazy it was and how I got that sponsorship and how hard I had to drive all the way to Alabama randomly and act like I was just passing through because the manager there wouldn't respond to my emails and I needed a, a, like a fourth stop to like make the Southeast work with the Bass Pros. It was nuts. So just I feel honored and just very proud that 
you know, there's there's somewhat of a legacy starting to be visualized by me while I'm still on this earth that that's influenced others. And just thank God for the opportunity that he's given me to uh, be able to do that, man. I'm just just a normal dude that loves fishing like everybody else. So on, on your podcast sometime, you should, you know, if you don't listen to Hooked on Wild Waters podcast, you should. But uh, you should do like find some people who have done great, like Travis. Lance and Lance. so many others. Tim and, and do, yep. Yeah, do, do like a reunion, River That's Bass true. reunion of people who have went on to great things and who've done great in kayak fishing since then. Kid, Kid Morris, there you go. What we get? Yeah, good show. That would be. That would be. Cool. All right. So we'll get started with the term. We'll go back to a tournament now. Um, <laughs> some who, I guess, uh, one of y'all, whoever wants to do it, just kind of give a layout of, of Lake Champlain and kind of lay it out for everybody everybody who hasn't been there like me uh, yeah, I, vote, come on. I vote kate what oh, you what you all right <laughs> Wait, yeah go kate lake champlain is gigantic <laughs> uh it, if you've never been there um it's going to be uh several hours driving through very narrow two lane roads through old towns. Uh, so it's actually very pretty scenic drive, um, very historic area with a lot of history as far as, you know, the, the French and the British and the American uh, uh, history. So, but it's a North South Lake this gigantic uh, and we could only launch from the New York side top part was a very clear small mouth dominated the bottom south part was muddier large mouth and the middle is like some weird combination no man's land how's that i don't like <laughs> it <laughs> you had me at historical and pretty dry but that's, mm -hmm. that's worth it and small mouth i mean you yeah. can't you know, small mouth yeah. rule and somewhere down deep in the very middle, there's this thing called Champ that just lives there. This this monster called yeah. Champ that everybody is. It's like the Loch Ness monster that everyone is obsessed with. And uh, oh. it, yeah, I, I don't know if you guys some, know about that. I saw some Champy floats. Yeah, I think there is. I guess there's a Champy parade or something yeah. like that. So yeah, I, I have a Champy's chicken place here. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> That's it. Kate, Kate, I was watching your YouTube video earlier, and uh, when you had that drum hooked, I was joking around saying, I was like, I think she's got a BB hooked right now. <laughs> yeah. I kept guessing what it was. I was like, it's a muskie. It's a salmon. It's a, yeah. you know, it's a laker. I don't know what the heck it's this the is. It's the Loch Ness Monster. It could have been. It could have been. <laughs> that could have been the second one I caught, but <laughs> that was massive. That's awesome. Cool. So now yeah. we'll roll into practice. Travis, uh, did you get to practice? How did it go for you? Uh, yeah, I practiced for, it was probably like three hours uh, on Friday. Um, like I said, I, I did fish Champlain in a college FLW tournament um, back in like 2012, 2011, somewhere around there. Um, so I had an area that I knew had uh, a lot of smallmouth. Um, I didn't catch any big ones during that college trail. It was just a lot of like two and a half pounders. Uh, it was, you know, that was a basketball tournament, so it was by weight but there were a ton of them there. So I just went back and I was, I figured since I'm a better fisherman now, I would just go back to that same area and see if there's some bigger ones. Um, and I, I didn't, I didn't factor in what the wind was going to be doing. I didn't really look at any of that until I got there and I realized there was like three, four foot waves. Uh, so it nice. was, uh, yeah, it, it was a battle. I, I struggled pre-fishing and when I was pretty much about to call it quits and go look at rivers and do, do the river bassing thing. Um, I was just dragging a finesse jig, uh, you know, on some rocks and hooked up, caught a, caught a 19 and three quarter and, and just decided to, uh, put all my eggs into that basket and hope that that fish wasn't, wasn't lying to me. Um, and, <laughs> and that there were more there. And then sure enough, the next morning there, there were a lot more there than I ever would have imagined. Yeah. That's, I love a finesse jig. We're mm -hmm. going to get into that in a minute. I love a finesse jig. Yeah. Well, Drew, I know that you got you some practice in because me and you had a phone call during the week and you were down there running around like crazy. So tell us about it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you made your whole family trip. I did. Yeah. I had my in-laws there <laughs> and my uh, wife, Christina, my son, Theo. It was pretty cool because um, they've never been to a tournament. So it was really, really special to have them there. And it's just such a beautiful area and a destination. And 
So I, I thought, you know, my wife is uh, pregnant. We're expecting uh, with uh, a little baby girl uh, in December. So congrats. Yeah, hey, man. man. She's, yeah, doing cool. she's doing good. She's doing a little, little bit better. She had a rough, rough first trimester. We just entered the second and she's starting to feel a little bit better, but uh, she still has her, her, her moments here where she's pretty, pretty nauseous. But anyway, it was, so it was my plan, strategic plan. I mean, obviously I love hanging out with my family and my in-laws are really cool. So I thought, well, I can only get away for so many tournaments this year, but if I bring them with me on one, that's almost like one that I don't have to be away for. Right. So I'm like, Hey, why don't we all go to Lake Champlain? It's going to be gorgeous. It's a bucket list. It's Adirondacks. And they were like, sounds great. You know, cause uh, my mother-in-law is a school teacher. So she's off of school. My father-in-law has his own company. So he was able to plan that time away. And so, and they actually went on to Maine after that to take another week to do some vacation. So it worked nice. out fantastic uh, yeah yeah so i got in a, uh, probably about two days of pre-fishing during we got there late monday night so i had tuesday wednesday thursday and friday but we did family stuff for probably two days total and then uh yeah had two days to, to pre-fish and i just and i said this on the awards uh, stage but basically i just drove around the whole lake and sampled just very bits and pieces and it's like kate said you know the south is murkier you got the river coming in the south it's all murkier and you got a lot of grass, more largemouth, uh, but you actually can catch a lot of smallmouth down there too. Surprisingly, I caught a lot of smallies down there. And the word on the street is they've been smallmouth have been sort of dominating throughout the whole lake more and more and more. Like I don't think it's a as 50-50 as it used to be. It's just that I think a lot of the when you target largemouth, there's like certain areas like Ticonderoga and places they're just loaded. So. Um, Anyway, but but anyway, that, that you can catch a lot of them down south, surprisingly. But the um, and then the mid lake, I, I sampled little you know rivers and creeks all the way around and, and different spots of the lake. And like Travis said, I eventually decided to go for um, a spot that that was a river that I caught a nineteen pre fishing and like a seventeen ish fish. I caught two good ones and kind of left it alone. And I went to like another river and caught a couple 17s, a little over 17 inch fish. And I said, well, I'm going to, you know, I've got these two spots I can move during the day. And so that's, that's kind of where I started, but that was my pre-fish just kind of sampled. You know, I did catch some large mouth down South as well. And uh, yeah, so I, I'll talk about the tournament when it's tournament time, but that's pretty much it. Like I said, on stage, it was like a buffet. I wanted to just take a little bit here and there from the buffet <laughs> and then, you know, really go back hard when I find something that I really liked and, and was hoping that they weren't lying to me. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. Catherine, how about you? Oh, I sort of similar to those guys. I, I, uh, pre-fished see Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and I did a sample as well. Um, I did not go South really super South, like Ticonderoga South Bay. I did not, do that. Um, I'm one of those weird people that wanted to do the middle of the lake. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I uh, sampled uh, some of the um, some of the northern part a little bit, but um, I really like the gin clear water, um, but I just didn't find the bite up there that I wanted. Um, so what I did find was more of a mixed bag. Um, and it was a big gamble because it was very much open lake, south facing. And um, what I usually look for uh, in tournaments um, is I want something that ha gives me a bunch of different options because it's like I always say, it's always plan F that happens. <laughs> so, so all my best laid plans never work out. So I like to have some backup plans so that the area that I decided to fish gave me some different possibilities in case what happened happened with the wind or the bite was different, but I had found some really good fish. Um, I didn't really have like a spot, but um, an, a general area I'd found um, a lot of like 18 to twenties. And I thought this is, this is going to put me in contention if I can reproduce that. And uh, I would love to have that problem. <laughs> so many eighteens and twenties. <laughs> I just well, the, you know, I did probably the problem. Yeah, we'll talk about turn of it, but that's that's <laughs> sort of my uh, that was my my feeling on that, and uh, I didn't have a lot of driving I was going to have to do, and 
um, yeah, so that was it. And honestly, this also the pre-tournament, um, I actually took a day and rested <laughs> on Friday. I didn't pre-fish at all before on Friday before a tournament. Um, I've been learning that I go too hard <laughs> and uh, that I don't have anything in the tank for a two-day tournament or, you know, I push myself. So I actually just on Friday, I rested and just planned my strategy and rigged up and you might have unlocked a little yeah. secret right there for yourself that mm -hmm. that day of rest and letting your your spots rest. You might have just y'all better watch out. She might have just dialed that last little piece in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a full day rest because you know I never sleep very well that night before, and I just took it easy and hydrated a lot and ate well and relaxed. So. That's the exact opposite of anything most of yeah. us do. We're drinking yeah. way too much, Everybody, eating all the greasiness. Yeah, and fishing until the last second of that's the, right, you know. And and I didn't, and I've had that like sort of FOMO, like fear of missing out, like everybody's out thing, and I'm just like chilling and eating pie and listening to music. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, pro Drink. probably helped it probably helped that you found some 18 to 20 inch fish on yeah. the earlier the other days it was easy to cut out just oh, yeah shoot. my light almost fell sorry i caught my light just in time but anyway um yeah if, if you find fish like that i mean what else what else do you need right you might as well take it take a day off and that's the way a lot of the yeah. big bass boat tours do anyway they have a day off um uh, which is smart i love to do that if it's possible and i find enough you know good fish that's the dream. So you were just living the dream there. You don't have a long, you don't have a long drive. You get all that kinds of rest, good food. I mean, I'm, I'm jealous. You're probably, you know, taking a nice hot bath, eating bonbons, just taking it easy. <laughs> Pressing the muscles. Sounds like my, my kind of a uh, Friday right there. Oh my Lord. <laughs> what, what, what phase were they in? I, I know that at Lake St. Clair guys right now, they're, they're catching spawners. Were, were they still spawning there? Or post now? Somewhere. I caught one off a of bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, I'm they, so jealous. Yeah. What was what was the temperature like up there? Because it has been the the number hasn't been high in Alabama, but the humidity here sucks so bad. It's been miserable. What kind of temperatures did y'all have? Seventies, uh, maybe. Oh, it good. was it was overcast. It was kind of like cool. Uh, I know it, it rained at least on me uh, Saturday for for a good bit. Um, Sunday, Sunday was a little bit warmer. Sunday warmed up. It was a little bit nicer. Uh, it was yeah. just really windy. On yeah, the most, yeah. yeah. Most of the week was in the seventies during the pre-fishing, yes. but I'm then so it jealous. was like, then on the tournament day, it was like 80 that first day. And then, um, uh, 90, probably 90 something that mm -hmm. or low nineties. But it I mean, well with that wind, with that wind, yeah, it didn't feel yeah. too bad at all. It was great. Okay. So now we'll roll into a tournament track and I'll say the numbers here because they're, they're pretty crazy. Uh, day one, Travis, you had 97 and a quarter. You had the big bags both days uh, of the whole tournament. One at wire to wire, man. That's that's amazing. Uh, the uh, Matthew Zappala, he was in second with 96 and a quarter. Pat Viamont, I think that's how you say it, or Viamet with 95 and a quarter. Drew, you were in fourth with 93 and three quarter. Ike was in 93. He, he was in fifth with 93 and three quarter. And Catherine, you had 91 and three quarter. So just six inches back, not too bad. Uh, I mean, I'm saying not too bad. That's great. <laughs> 91 and three quarter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Day two, uh, Travis, again, backed it up. Big bag of the tournament with 98 and three quarter. Catherine in second with 94. And uh, Drew, you were in third. So y'all went one, two, three. Day two, you had 93 and three quarter. And then total... Travis with 196 just, you know, and killed everybody. I mean, I, I hate to say that, but nine yep. ounces, you know. Yep. Uh, Gapped them. Yeah. Yep. Drew with 175 and a half, and Catherine 185 and three quarter. Cody Milton, he's always up there. He was in fourth with 184 and a half. And you and Minor uh, would, in fifth with 182 and a quarter. And uh, he's got to be leading her. He's got to be up there with AOY. He's he's had a great year too. So and yeah, I, I think he finished in seventh. So it was. What did you say I had? One eighty. One one. Again. Hang on. Actually, I've got uh, something. One eighty seven and a half. Okay. Oh, one eighty seven and a half. Okay, I thought you said one seventy five. I was like, wait a second. I've got something uh, I can pull up and show you guys if you want to see it. I got the yeah the, that chart. The chart linked to weight. I put it in for you guys. Yeah. So cool. let's 
let me pull it up. Um, and this is so cool. Like I, I want to get this from yeah. you so we can talk about it. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. 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 It, I'll get to you guys for sure. Let's um, let me go click on share screen. And I'm glad Drew knows how to run this thing too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Window. Uh, I think it's, I think it's this one here. All right. Let's share it. Here we go. And now audio listeners, uh, we're going to explain this real quick. Uh, do y'all have the screen up yet? You got yep. it? Okay, cool. Let's actually go to, so on day one, uh, Travis, like you said, had 97 and a quarter, and that is a, about 21 and a half pounds. But let me say this. I found a couple, I looked and found def- a couple different charts on length uh, to weight. And the chart that we're using to set this table is actually the lowest one I found. So I w- that combined with the fact that these fish were gorged, Mm-hmm. Like this is just an average. This is like, you know, you can add a little bit of weight for pre-spawn and maybe take away a little bit for post. And Travis, you can tell me if this is true or not, but I'm pretty sure your fish were like gorging on those shad. They were fat. So I would say you had closer to 23 or 24 pounds. If, if I'm being honest, because our, I think. Yeah. Uh, all of them were real healthy. Uh, day two, I had a 19 and a half incher. That was pathetic for a 19 and a half. He was the only one that, <laughs> right. uh, that, that probably w- wouldn't, wouldn't fit the chart, but right. other, they were all pretty, pretty good. All right. So you did. Okay. So day one, you had tw- 21.46 pounds technically, yeah. uh, according to this chart, but I think that's probably a little bit on the low side. So maybe 23, I had 19.36. So I would say probably more like 20, uh, maybe a little bit over. And then Kate, you had 18. So probably more like 19. So that was day one and day two. And part of the reason why we want to look at this too, is because the Bassmaster elite series is going to be there next weekend. I believe I think it's next yeah. weekend. Do some and, comparing. Yeah. And, yeah. and Pick, Pickwick was the exact same way with KBF KBF Pickwick event. When Ken Morris and I had 90, we tied with 98.75 and that's like 25 pounds or something. And then the guys that were winning on Pickwick on, on the Elite Series were were getting around 22, 23, something like that. You know, I think maybe one or two people had 25 at the most. So that was just kind of cool to see. But anyway, um, day two here you can see Travis at 98.75 inches was 22.59 pounds. So, again, probably closer to 24, 25. I had the same exact 93.75, but only 18.92, a little bit less because you'll notice on the last, even though I had the exact same number both days, 93 and three quarters, they were different length fish to get there. So if you have a bigger fish, it actually, which I did on day one, and you know I had a 20 and, and a half and a 20, it actually made my overall weight, even though I have the exact same length, a little bit more. So that's interesting to note too. Depends on which fish, you know. And then Kate, you had uh, 19.15. So yeah, probably like 21 pounds, 20 and a half, something like that. So I mean, you, you do that two days in any bass boat tournament up there and you're going to be, you know, money. Yeah. Yeah. Close to the top. And then let's see if I have another. Okay. There's the totals right there. So that's 44 pounds, 44 pounds. We're probably looking at 47 or like something like that for Travis for two days, 38 for me, 38.28. So probably more like 40 and Kate probably similar, probably around 40. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. I, yeah. I love this. Is This can be used as a technical way to throw this in the boat guy's face and be like, hey, we're doing the same thing you are. Yeah. Because I, I can't stand when I hear him talk about, oh, they do the length. That doesn't change the fish. I mean, sometimes, you know, yeah. like you said, a 19 can suck sometimes. Mm-hmm. I caught a 20 last year that had a head of a 12, but was, I mean, he looked like he had hit a dock and just, <laughs> and <laughs> like, it was that thick, terrible fish. But no, it, this is really cool, man. I'd like to see more of this. Yeah. Anytime yeah. you can catch, you know, 45 plus pounds in two days, you're, uh, you're, 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 you're making it happen. Yeah. I, right down. I was watching, uh, like Brandon Palinick's, uh, like the series, uh, his like YouTube video of when he won Champlain, um, in 2020. And I think his, his big, his big bag, uh, for that tournament was like 21 pounds. So, I was wondering. I was wondering what my weight would would compare, but I watched that that YouTube series probably like three times, just getting myself amped up uh, last week. We um, got to get like I'm sure you got plenty to do already, but it'd be cool to get that going for like a whole series and follow the leader of bass boat events, and then find a way to just get that posted nationally, where like 
they can see it, we can see it, their sponsors see it, just be like, oh, these kayak guys are hammering it. Well, you know, Dwayne was on y'all's uh, show. Which show was he on? Which, uh, one of the OG, yeah, show. OG show. He was on there, and he did mention that I had have talked to him about this chart and, at the Bassmaster Classic, and I said, "Look, man, we got to get you guys can do this. Turn X can put it in under a column under the standings, the normal leaderboard we see. There can be a column that says estimated weight, your approximate weight, and That'd it can sit sick. there. And then everybody, because I've always said, there's three things that that are holding kayak fishing back that the, that we're not getting as into the mainstream world as much as we want because of these three things. And one of them is nobody in the bass fishing world knows what 97 inches means or 90 inches. They don't know how to equate that. They know what 20 pounds is. They know what 15 or 25 or dirty 30 is. They know all that. They don't have a clue what that is. So once they understand that and they see that we're going to get some respect. And obviously we, we should get some respect. The fact that, you know, one of the best anglers on the planet is you fish two of the Hobies and a lot of a lot of us have been fortunate to beat him, Mike Iaconelli, and that's again a big compliment to him and his his career and what he's done. But you know, he's not like he's not like he's just coming here and won every time. You know, he's gotten the money, but and he's fished Champlain, uh, God knows how many times. And yeah. I f- fished it one time. I mean, this is my first time there, Kate. Wasn't that your first time? Yes. So and <laughs> Travis had only been up there one other time. So I mean, that's that's saying something. I know it's yeah, not. Yeah. You know, oh man. You know, to be able to sit back like. Like like Kate and Drew, you know, and I mean, even you, Travis. Like, I love Mike Iaconelli, and you can sit back and be like, I beat Iaconelli. Like, yeah. nothing else has to be said. Yeah, because no, it, it, it happened. Yeah. It was the same tournament. Everybody was limited to the same things. Like, twice. That's a, twice. <laughs> 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 Two days through. <laughs> No, well, I mean, like last year on the Susquehanna too. He's oh, over, that's right, he's that's over, right. He's over, over two against me. Now, again, the fact that we're talking about him, nothing. But I love Mike Iaconelli. He's been an inspiration, and it's a huge compliment. The same way when I heard you, Kate, say you wanted to beat me and Ike, I was you were you were joking with me at the results, saying I hope you weren't offended. I was like, no, I was like, it's a compliment to hear someone say they want to come into tournament and all they want to do is beat. Drew Gregory, that like means the world to me. You know what I mean? So I don't offend it. I know he doesn't get offended, but it is. I was texting actually with uh, Matt Airy. He's uh, one of my friends on the Elite Series, and he almost won the Classic. And uh, and he he just texted me and said, "Great job, man!" On Champlain, he was really happy for me. And I and uh, I said, "Yeah, man." But I, I was really stoked that I was able to you know beat Ike again. You know, it's two times, and I said because you know now he's over two against me, <laughs> and so it's like I don't know. But anyway, um, it's just the respect for kayak fishing will improve with that, that column and people understand the weights we're doing because I know they'll say, well, they can get into places we can't, but we also can't run to the other end of the lake if it's not happening like you can. So there, it it honestly is pretty equal. You know what I mean? Their, their advantages versus ours. So that plus the fact that we don't live stream yet. I mean, I know paddle and fin trail does, but there's no live streaming. So people can't really see how incredible and athletic and I mean, Travis, you're out there in these three and four foot waves. You flip twice. It's bananas what you did to catch those fish, and it was unbelievable. I bet you, if somebody could have witnessed that on live stream, that would have that would have just been the most exciting thing ever to watch. So yeah, if, I need to hear these stories now. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, you got to hear it. You got to hear it. Which I'm All sure right. we'll get to it. But uh, yeah, well, and then and then once purses, the other third, just to finish my third thing, once yeah. purses get, once we have a thousand or two thousand or twenty five hundred dollar entry fees, our our grand winnings is someone every weekend's winning or every tournament is winning 50, you know, $75,000. Those three things, when those three things happen, the, the mainstream world will start to turn their heads a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and they're coming, they're coming so at least that one length, length to weight uh, column is coming with Dwayne's going to try to, to get that in. So one down. Sweet. Yeah. One down. Cool. Well, Travis, uh, we'll start with day one. Tell us how it went. Apparently it was, uh, rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Day one um, was rough. You know, I, I launched in the morning. There were there were like four other guys there in. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure they were Hobies, but if if not, they were all they were all pedal drives. And one guy even, you know, he asked to to exchange phone numbers with me because he thought I was crazy to be uh, heading out there in a Kilroy. And um and, and I was worried they were all heading to pretty much where I was heading, but they they all veered right and just hugged hugged the bank essentially once we came out of a, a little creek where, where we launched. Um, and, and they, they didn't want to, they didn't want to cross, cross the channel, cross, cross the waves, which is what I knew I had to do to get to, 
where, where I caught that one big fish pre-fishing. And um, once I got out there, uh, they were on that, that finesse jig right away. I caught like a 17 incher very quickly. Um, then had like four short fish in a row. Um, and, and then things started getting a little bit lighter. I was able to see a little bit more what was going on. Um, it, it's maybe like 45 minutes into the tournament. And, uh, and I start realizing that, that there's small mouth, like chasing bait fish and, and seagulls are starting to circle in the area I'm at. And, um, in, it, it was like national geographic. I started to be able to see small mouth, like cruising in like the crest of the wave. I would like, as a wave would roll, I'd be looking in there and you'd see a big old small mouth, um, in there just cruising across it. So I decided, uh, it was 720, 725. I, I put on a, uh, a topwater spook and, uh, and they started hitting immediately, uh, but it was really hard to work in those waves. Yeah, like, spook on the big waves. That, that sounds crazy. Yeah, it, it was pretty much just something that was shiny on top of the water, so they just hit it. I wasn't really working it that great. It was hard to in those waves. I wasn't really walking it as well as it, it needed to, but I guess it didn't matter. Um, but then I switched to a heavier top water. Uh, I really like a whopper plopper, and I picked this up uh, before I did like a fun trip to the Susquehanna. It's like the Berkeley Bucktooth Beaver. Yeah, I just thought it would be funny to catch um, oh. big smallies on a on a beaver, and it's real heavy and it's a little bit oversized to what I, the size whopper plopper I usually throw. But it, it was able to to dig into those waves better, and and th they were eating it. They were all over it. Um, and I, I for for the it was just a big fish bait pretty much from then on until about 10, 11 o'clock, I was catching smallies in the 18 to 20 inch class. And, and I, I had to back off. I was like, I, I, you know, now I'm catching 17s and 18s that I need to save for tomorrow. I, I just need to leave these fish alone and, and get out of there. And I, I pretty much called it a day almost. And I, I tried, I floated around, I actually set up a float trip. My girlfriend was there with me. So I launched at one boat ramp and took out at another. It was about a five mile float for me. Um, and just went with the wind and I tried to figure something else out for day two in case they weren't there and I, I couldn't find anything else. So in terms of day two, it was just hoping that they were, they were going to be there again. I mean, the way you describe the fish and the waves, dude, that like, I love surf fishing when I go down to the beach yeah. and I love throwing giant walking baits in the big waves. And like when you can catch the Spanish and stuff running down there, it's the same thing. You can see the wave yeah. come by and see them run through. Yeah. Dude, if I small mouth like that, that is insane. It, it was nuts. Pretty much whenever the seagulls would come and go, whenever they came, I knew it was time. Like I had a, you know, I had maybe a 20, 30 minute window where it was going to be nuts. Really? And yeah, you know, in, in the area I was fishing was really, the school was bigger than I could have imagined. Cause I would even like look out farther from where just I was able to cast and like, you'd see small mouth just roll. If you just stared in one spot long enough, you would see like a dorsal fin come up or you'd, you'd see a small mouth rolling out there. Jesus. Why, 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 that, why that area? Was it just uh, pretty much the wind on the whole lake was pushing to this spot, this okay. point. And, and he was the only one crazy enough to go over there. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was nuts. Um, and, and you know, I mentioned I was in a Kilroy. Is it? Yeah, Powell, right. I love my Kilroy. It's great for rivers. It cuts through wind very well. It's very paddles very straight. Um, but with those waves, I filled up with water like a lot, and it got me off balance. And if you get sideways in one of those waves, as you've got water in the bottom of your Kilroy, yeah. It, it both both days I flipped because of that. Um, but fortunately, the fish I was catching were in three feet of water. Um, I didn't have a fish finder, but I. I screenshotted a topo map before before I made the trip, and I, so I knew how deep the area I was fishing was. But yeah, three feet of water. Dude, my man, <laughs> my man went in a like ocean situation in a sit-in kayak with no electronics and still kicked everybody's butt and fell out twice. Yeah, <laughs> with, with, with a picture of a map. <laughs> with a picture of a map. He didn't even nice. have an app. Like, <laughs> yeah. dude. Did you, no, lose I, all, did you lose all your gear and just hold on to that one with the beaver and just be like, I got you. And, uh, and bring that that, uh, fortunately, yeah, I didn't lose everything. I, uh, I broke one rod. Uh, at one point I did cast the beaver off into like the abyss, just slinging it all day long. And it went flying. And I was just praying that a small mouth wouldn't pick it up before I got, got over there to, to, to grab it and tie it back on. Did the wave <laughs> like bring it right back to you? Like it was meant to be. 
uh, so slowly, but no, I, I, God I, I was like here. After it. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't waiting. I, I pulled my anchor up and paddled straight after it as soon as it left, and I just kept my eyes on it because I needed that bait. Uh, so, you know, so here's a question: floppers, but yeah, with 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 the big check, are you gonna upgrade boats now? Like, obviously, keep the Kilroy for the river stuff, but is it time <laughs> for a big pedal boat? Uh, it, maybe I don't know. I mean, I I really prefer river stuff. To, to be honest, that's what I like to do. I'm not a lake fisherman at all. I don't know how to fish lakes. I treated this one as a big, that wind just created it. It was just one big rapid. I was just fishing a big rapid all day long. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. So, yeah. How, how, how can you beat that? Like, no, I mean, this is one of those things where it was meant to be, you know, y'all had a great tournament, but man, this man was, yeah. it, was it was meant to happen. Dude, absolutely. All I can think about when, when Travis is telling me this story with this, he's telling me this at the uh, results show, he's throwing this beaver out there in, in a big school of like bait fish with seagulls and he's throwing a mammal. And I'm like, just, and I understand how aggressive they were. They would have hit anything. Right. But I'm laughing as you're telling this national geographic version, because all I can think about is when they're dragging that seal for the great white sharks, you know, in those shows and they <laughs> come up and they the out of the water. Yeah. So the, the great whites are the small mouth and you're throwing the, the seal that's surfing the waves, a little mammal and the small mouth are just these great white sharks, just blasting it out of the water. That's just, that so, is awesome. that's so cool, man. Yeah. But yeah, I know I do 93 and three quarters, two days in a row. I would have taken that, at, you know, before the tournament in, in a heartbeat. And, and I would have thought I would have won. You know what I mean? So the fact that, you know, Kate, you and I, I mean, it's anyone below us, we, we definitely did not lose this event. It, we, we definitely just <laughs> got beat. You know what I mean? So and that's, that's, the, that's the way I would like to lose, you know, kind of like out there in Texas and possum kingdom when those guys just crushed it, we just, we just got beat. We didn't, didn't lose, but we still obviously all, all won. So yeah, no, won it, kill it. it was another one that was just meant to be. So Drew, t tell us about your day, man. Well, um, so yeah, I went back to the, the river area where I caught the 19 and it, it was, the water was very low in all the rivers and creeks. So I wasn't really sure how many smallmouth they would hold. You know what I mean? Cause you can stand and see them in pre-fishing and, and you would, you kind of know what's there how many are there. So I knew this area may not have that many fish. Wasn't that big. And, um, but I had the other backup area that was nearby another river that had some, some nice ones I caught in it, but I never expected to catch like a, any, like 20 plus inches in there. I never expected. I just assumed these fish are there still holding over from the spawn. I never saw any fish spawning and pre-fishing. Um, uh, but, Obviously, like I said earlier during the tournament, I did catch one off a bed that I saw. So I went to the place where I caught the biggest smallmouth pre-fishing with the, the plan that I'm going to get the, hit these two rivers up kind of north first. And then I have some really good largemouth stuff down south. And I know this sounds crazy, but I, I fished. Yeah, I fished the, uh, the rivers up north and I was like, all right, I fished them. I'm done here there just can't be any more fish here. And then I cranked up the Tacoma outboard and drove an hour and 40 minutes South. Wow. During the tournament. Yeah. It was like a Sabine run. A long pros, Sabine yeah. run. It was, it, but it was actually really nice and relaxing. Cause you're in the AC. You're I'm eating some food, drinking, getting, you know, refreshed, checking the leaderboard, just kind of seeing what's going on, you know, just no big deal. Cause I already had a good uh, limit uh, already because I caught a 20 and a half, and a, which is again, I'm just shocked that these size fish were in there. Uh, a 20 and a half, I caught a 20 and some, you know, 18 somethings. Right. So I'm looking pretty good. I only had a small, like 15 and maybe a 15 and three quarters, 16, somewhere, something like that. 15 and a half. I think I need to get rid of that one. And unfortunately I was, only, I was able to upgrade, but it was only 16 and a quarter. So that was really where I was like, man, if I could have just, gotten one more good one on day one i could have been in the hunt but it ended up not mattering because you know i never would have had enough to beat travis anyway so <laughs> but that was uh that was day one and then day two um after i saw what happened in the rivers up north there i said well i'm gonna start there i just don't know what else honestly is is left so uh i'm gonna just go practicing just pre-fishing just based on what i know now now that i fished hard right in this area and what i've learned i'm gonna hopefully milk this area for the most I can. And I got so fortunate because I got there 
And I'd never been this particular, I actually reversed the rivers. I went to the one I went second, I went first, right? So I was never there in the morning like this. So I went there and all of a sudden out kind of in the middle in a deeper area, it's just kind of big and deep. And a sandbar on one side, a bunch of big boulders on the, on the other side. I was fishing along the boulders. And I'm not getting a bit, a, a bite. And I'm thinking, this is not good. This is right where they should be, deep water on these humongous boulders. And then all of a sudden, out in the middle, I see bait just getting crushed. And smallmouth just going, goosh, goosh, goosh. and so I'm like, oh, oh, paddle, paddle, paddle. And I get, up, get close enough, and I throw the whopper plopper. I throw whopper plopper over there, and it's like, goosh, goosh. they're just smashing it and missing it. And finally, one hooks up with it. And uh, I'm fighting the fish in for maybe 30 seconds. It gets 30 feet from the boat, and it comes off. It spits the whopper plopper out, and it lands about 15 feet from the kayak. And I throw my head back. I'm like, oh, and then I just grab the re reel to wind again. And I, I never heard a splash. I never heard a, a crush or anything. And I just had another smallmouth on. I just It was just on a whopper plopper. I think what happened is when this whopper plopper fell out of the fish's mouth, and this happened to me at Dardanelle, which is crazy. This yeah, happened twice. Behind yeah. The thing, yeah. Right? yeah. So this – and it happened 15 feet from the kayak. So the whopper plopper flies out of the smallmouth's mouth. It's like a, a, an 18-inch smallmouth. And it lands in the water. And I think what happens is, you know, when a topwater lands in the water, it goes under first a little bit. It – because I never heard or saw any other splash, you know, it, the, the strike, it was just on, like it went down under the water and it would just, it, I guess it was following the other fish, right? There was a school of them. It was trying to steal that bait out of its mouth and it was just on. And it was like a bigger one. It was like an 18 something. So somehow I, I got one bonus fish. And as I'm taking the pictures of that one, that takes a little time, right? You got to go over there and kind of get on the bank and do the pictures behind me. They're, they start busting again. So I'm like, I throw this one back real fast, paddle over there. And instead of a whopper plopper, I decided if they're going to, if they're going to eat something that close to my kayak, when they follow this other fish around and he spits the whopper plopper, it lands 15 feet and a bigger one eats it. I'm not going to throw the whopper plopper because they're going to eat anything. So I had a chatterbait on and that's a much better, you know, strike, to, strike to, yeah. yeah, to landing percentage. So instead I throw the chatterbait over there, crank, crank, crank. She hammers it. And it's like another 18 something. So I've got two bonus fish that didn't come out of my typical, you know, kind of deeper holes, little pools, if you will, where I was catching the smallmouth. So I'm like, this is good. You know, I never thought I would have such a head start. And then I actually went out towards the mouth of this river um, in the lake where I caught a fish and the sort of the shoal, the sandy sort of shoal where it just deltas and spits out. And uh, I remember Travis, we had even text the, after the first day and he, and he, made some random text back to me. He goes, cause I was telling him congrats and he was saying congrats to me. And he goes, dude, I've never caught, I've never seen, I never knew you could throw top water in three, four foot rollers. So when I get out to the mouth of this, you know, Creek, I caught one on a, or this, this river, or whatever. I caught a, um, a fish on a spinnerbait the other day in this one little spot. And I said, man, this whopper plopper's on. Let me just throw it. Travis was catching him in some big waves on, on top. So I throw it and then, it gets smashed and then I, it was a small one. Then I got, I threw it again and I got crushed by like an 18 and something. So now I've got three bonus fish that I never expected because I sort of expanded on my area and they, I've not fished the areas where I caught some good ones the day before. So now I'm like, if I can just get one more good one out of this, this first stop, uh, I'll be feeling really good. And then I ended up catching um, the one, one off a of bed that I saw when I paddled by and, and I, it was kind of, cloudy but i just noticed a glance down i saw a bed by a log and there was a big small mouth kind of swam away and i said i bet you that fish was on that bed okay so i went back and tied on a, a trd crawls on a power a z man cross size power finesse jig you know sure enough i, I was fortunate i was able to see the bed and because it was so glary out there at that time it wasn't sunny and um didn't have a power pole because it's the crescent uh CK one venture I was in, I don't have like a adapter for it yet to have a power pole. And I didn't have a motor. Obviously this is a Hobie event. I didn't have even my anchor wizard on. Cause I didn't really need it for this river. It wasn't like you needed it. So I had no tools like that. I just wanted a light throw and go kayak. So I just had to like continue to like find it and paddle and get blown by the wind. And man, once I got it in the, the bed though, the actual time, it's like a, you know, three, four foot deep. I mean, the fish all of a sudden was just on. I didn't really feel a thump or bite. It was just on. And I'm like, Holy cow. And so then I, I've caught four fish in areas that I didn't catch them the day before, didn't expect, which was just blowing me away. Because I told AJ the day before, I said, dude, I don't think I can get 93 and three quarters out of this spot again. It's just, it's shot. 
And uh, it just goes to show you, man, you can just continue. And on stage, I made the analogy. It's like I just opened up the cupboard, opened up the fridge. We don't have anything to eat. There's like hardly anything there. But somehow my wife's always like, dude, you're just so good. Like you'll find this, this and this and you whip something up and it's amazing. Somehow I just sort of like I caught the two schooling, caught the one at the mouth, caught the one off the bed and then went back to my spot where I knew there was probably going to be at least one good one in those couple spots. And I caught one. My, one of my bigger fish, my 19 inches off a spinner bait. And then I lost another really big one as well, but I already had five that were over, you know, like 18 inches. So, uh, and then I went and then I just burned that place down. So I went to my other area, my other river that I wanted to, to fish and I'd caught some decent ones and, uh, ended up upgrading like an 18 and a half over there on a, on a whopper popper too. And, and I caught an 18 over there. So I actually upgraded, uh, twice. Um, I, cause I think actually my smallest was 17 and three quarters. So I upgraded twice over there and, uh, I would just blew me away, but, um, yeah, it was, it was nuts, man. Nut, nuts event. And I was just happy to see, uh, you know, Travis do so well. I was so happy for him, even though, you know, I thought I, that what I did would have, should have won the event. I thought for sure, if, you know, you give me that choice, I would have taken it and, and thought I would have won, but couldn't have, uh, been beat by a better dude. So happy about that. Cool. Cool. Hey, I'll tell you what, y'all are making me want to go up there and fish for sure. I <laughs> ah, dude. Yeah. yeah. I'm salivating, man. Catherine, t- tell me about your days, uh, both of them. Uh, I'm sorry excited for this. We're holding you up so long. The, the show's so good. And no, no, great. no. I appreciate the opportunity to chat with you guys. So I don't, it's fine. Um, day one, well, like I said, I didn't really have like a spot. Um, I had developed a pattern in pre fishing and I was able to reproduce that on both sides of the river for miles is I, it was really, uh, I had two patterns. Uh, one was really, really for weeds at a certain depth. And I, I used, um, and I'll call it a Kate. I call it the Kate rig. It's, it's like, a, I take a giant TRD and backwards Texas rig it and put a butt spinner on it and just try to have a real vertical smooth presentation. Cause it was, you know, these, just these vertical stalks of weeds that it, that I had found some really big largemouth in, and it was very murky water. Um, that, that, that's that's a really interesting rig. It's like a the big tiny child rig with a spinner on the bottom. That's <laughs> cool. Yeah, maybe sort of. Yeah. Um, but it, I I started using that. I used like the made it sort of the I used like the deal the Z Man deal the big yeah, yeah. giant TRD. So I got that it, my boat. yeah, yeah. It, so it leave, right? with a with a with a silver willow blade uh, butt spinner. So it really gave it like a, a minnow like action, but a, a drop. And so I would pop that and it just, you know, uh, pop over each weed. Um, and I just, just keep tossing and just keep tossing. Um, but day one, uh, I went to an area that I had caught some fish in, um, some really large fish, some twenties, um, man, but I could not find the, the big fish. I got a bunch of 16s in there, but I did get a limit. Um, and as the wind started to pick up, um, I just started feeling uncomfortable because it was where I was, was com- you could see it just went straight South <laughs> looking. So it was, I just didn't want to be out there too much. And, and like I said, I'd, I'd like to have some options. Um, my other pattern was uh, uh, using a Okashira screw head with a, a spark shad and um and it was wind dependent so once that wind came up i was fishing a bridge abutment and you guys will see that in my video um it, there's some pretty special things about that brit about that bridge um but y- it you know it wasn't the kind of thing where there was always fish on it the fish are coming and going in that so you just have to keep constantly casting and you got to stay in a certain position on that bridge, but the wind was really, if you didn't have the wind, you didn't have the bite. So, so that was sort of like great thing when, when I felt that it was a little too dangerous to be out there that I didn't want to be out in that. So I went and worked that. And, and that's where I was able to upgrade on day one. Um, that bridge had both large mouth and small mouth. And I've got, um, I want to say I got like a, I got a 20, 20 incher. So I think some 19s and, and stuff off that for day one and, and giant drum. It was a, I mean, it was really 
the best day of fishing that I that I had experienced in a tournament. And I I just was laughing and having a blast. Like it was <laughs> just like the most fun. I like it didn't even feel like a tournament. I just was like I couldn't believe how much fun it was. I saw I saw your post at like that, you know, I was keeping up with everything and I saw your post and you're like, you know, the best day I've ever had in a tournament. Got to capitalize on it. And like, I was already pulling for you because we always pull for you. But like, I was like, dude, I hope to God, like <laughs> everything. And then I, like, I didn't even get to see the results before they got pulled down. And Susie Roloff, uh, she busted into the paddle and fin chat. Kate got third. Kate got third. No, it was, we were all hyped for you. Oh, yeah, that was it. But day two was, um, was harder. Um, I went, I went back sort of the similar area. The first hour I couldn't get a bite at all. And the wind was starting to come up and I just said, I'm out of here. I'm not going to, I know I've got with the wind, I've got a, a bite that the wind is going to really help me. Um, and so, and as much as I like to move around, but uh, man, I, 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 it was hard for me to sit in that one spot on that, that bridge all day and just keep <laughs> casting and casting. And it was a lot of work because that was like a washing machine. Like everybody's in and you got to stay in, in position to, to not just keep stuff in the, in the strike zone for, for those fish, but to land them because there's zebra mussels everywhere on that thing. And, you get out of position and you're going to lose your fish really quick. But I got uh, some really nice small mouth and they were just chunky fat. I mean, one of them, I swear to God, I could see like perch or something. Like it was just I don't think it, <laughs> like bulging out of it. Yeah. Like it was okay. just like, like its stomach was just swollen with so much. And I thought like, God, this fish has got an eating disorder because yeah, like, it could <laughs> that's been. like me after the sizzler. It could not. Yeah. <laughs> it could not have fit another fish in there, and it just saw my my little bait, and just you know, my my theory is that they're just just they're really mean, and they look at my innocent little thing and just say, "I I have to kill you." And <laughs> so yeah, yeah. so it, uh, smallmouth. Like I, I throw not with a spark shed. I experimented with the Okashira screwlock uh, this year in a river for smallmouth, mm -hmm. and you know, we're always throwing swim jigs and flukes and like decent profile stuff for them. And listening to people that fish up North using the small stuff, I was like, well, I got to try it. And I threw a little 2.7 or whatever Kitek on that little thing. And like, they hit it like it owes a money oh. and it is, it is oh, crazy. Yeah. They want to kill it more than anything. It's like popcorn shrimp that they just want to destroy. And, yep. and, you know, I've had friends. Who's, oh, I can friends. associate with that. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I have friends who always say, you can't throw that small stuff. You're not going to be able to keep a big fish on there. You got to throw these big five and six inch things to get big fish. And you need really heavy line. And I'm telling you what, like I fought a probably a 35 pound drum on 20 pound braid and, you know, I did upgrade the second day to 12 pound liter after that drum, but 10 pound liter on a, on a seven foot medium fast spinning rod. And I bet you thought you had a freaking like world <laughs> record. Like I thought, so. I thought so. You look at that video. I don't believe how big that dang thing is, but, but you can catch really big fish on really tiny things because they just want to kill it more than anything. And it's an easy meal. So that's my, one of my favorite things to throw. And I've been spending a lot of time with that. Um, and I just, I've caught really amazing fish on really tiny things. So I'm a, I'm a big advocate for, you know, smaller works just fine. It's just, you have to be, be confident in what you're doing. Sorry. And and, and I, patient, yeah. you know, the lighter stuff, like it does work, but it does. I mean, you're going to lose a few of them. You yeah. Know, you're going to, there's going to be some retying going on for sure. Yeah. And yeah. that, that bite was really, um, really dependent. Both my bites were really dependent on depth. Like these guys were doing top water and things like that. I try to get a top water bite, but it just wasn't there. Um, but they were, 
really using the depth and and the abutments to really push the bait in the current and and stun them and destroy little tiny fish. So, you know, uh, the depth is what mattered and the position is what mattered because I saw bass boats come and go all day and they were fishing completely the wrong side. And those smallmouth were so keyed on to the direction of the wind and, and how it contoured with the structure and, and the depth that it's, if you could get it right in there, you were going to catch just monster fish. I wonder if you were on an alive spawn because they were spawning. There was still some, some alive spawn going on. You know, the one that was really fat, you, you could have been on that maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I have never seen an alive in my life. So I don't know. <laughs> so. Yeah. They're like a herring. They're one of like, a, they're like, a, okay. they're a herring species, I believe. Um, yeah. But they're spawning still. Um, so you could have been because uh, they they spawn like shad do. They're always on something. You know what I mean? They're, they mm -hmm. shad will spawn on the docks, dock posts, or bridge or whatever marinas on stuff. So if you were saying there was a, some structure there, I bet you there was some spawning going on right there by our wives because you're also saying you're catching these gorged out, you know, fish. Yeah, they were so, gorged. So but I don't know. Who knows? I, always, I was convinced that they were keyed. Okay, so this bridge had like a, a like a loose piece of metal. And when the when the wind and waves were just rocking, that thing would like clang. And I called it the dinner bells. So the minute I started because <laughs> it, it, it was like the buffet had started. So like the, you know, things would die down when the wind would die down. And the minute I'd be like messing around and the minute i heard the dinner bell ring i just started tossing you know and it's like i, I swear to god this. they were like keyed in like the minute they heard the dinner bell like they were like all the smallies would start showing up for dinner and just that's cool the heck out it, so. I, i've been doing this this show for three years and i don't think i've ever heard any three <laughs> anglers more dialed in to a bite and and, show and it was three different i mean top water was a yeah. thing but three different things like you said it dan like it's just your day some days i mean i'm not taking anything away from y'all y'all all prepared in your own ways and you all are you know perfecting your craft but like it was meant for travis to straight murder him yep. <laughs> drew yeah. was just catching them in random spots places in his spot that he wasn't ready for Drew and was, Catherine's was, got a bell just... ringing on a bridge yeah. whacking them. this is awesome no it was cool man I, honestly this is probably the event I've been most proud about because I actually just fished the moment fish just you know what I mean I just had I had, I just didn't think I was going to be able to get anything close to what I did that second day and I'm just proud that I fished the moment made all the right decisions and uh, it just happened to work and then I, I had to execute you know I only lost one that you know, really big one that probably could have helped, but it wouldn't have mattered. So I don't know. I think people, <laughs> dude, people probably just look and they're like, Oh, Drew, he's always in the top 10 or always this. He probably just, he just expects it or whatever. Dude, I, I almost, I was this close because my better spot I thought was down South with the large mouth I'd found down in that murky water. And I was this close to never going up North to hit, hit those small mouth because I had an hour and 40 minute drive on day one to go down South to get the large mouth. So I, and, and so I just said, you know, it's the only place, I, even though it's small, it's the only place I caught my biggest fish there. I got to go try it first. And then if it's not happening, then I can always move south. And it turns out I, I never went south again after that first day because I didn't need to want to. And just imagine if I would have gone south first, because I fished south for three, probably three and a half hours on day one. I never, I only caught a 16 and a quarter that, that barely, you know, upgraded me a little bit. And I caught 30 was down there. So imagine if I would have gone down there first, you're catching numbers like that. I would have never left. I would maybe we could have gotten like a 17 or some 16s. My string would have been like, you know, 80 inches and I'd been sitting in whatever. Like that's how close I was to not ending up second, but ending up like 20 one seconds. One behind me, yeah. Drew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, I would have been behind Kate. So it's, it's, it's not as easy as it just looks on tourney X when you see those fish just <laughs> popping up and then you see the standings and you're like, Oh, Drew's up there it's telling you, you guys who are listening, you're, you're so much closer than you realize to having those days and those just moments. Cause it's, it's not easy, man. Fishing's not easy. Even for those that somehow we end up at the top often it's, it's stressful and it's not easy, man. But anyway, 
Well, Travis, that's why we talk about it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Big bag of the tournament. You, you come back with that naughty beaver bite another day. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all I did day two. Uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty simple. Went out through the beaver right away. Um, by seven thirty, I had I had six fish over nineteen um, with that, that twenty one and a quarter. Uh, and I was out of the water by 11. Um, I, you know, I took my girlfriend with me for the trip. I was bummed because the, the area I was fishing was so, so rough. She couldn't take her paddleboard. She loves the paddleboard. She couldn't take that out there and like hang out with me. That, oh, I, she could have surfed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> out me watch, hanging out with me, watching me wreck, you know, these small mouth. But, uh, uh, so, you know, I loaded up at 11 with her. We went and found a bay that was a, a, a lot calmer. And just hung out, watched the results uh, come in. We we celebrated a little bit. We, we saw Drew uh, swoop into second place. Um, I was still casting, you know, around trying to see if I could make something crazy happen. But um, you did enough, sir. You did yeah, enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't meant to be, but I I, I was like, I, it's going to be tough to catch me, you know, at this point. Um, you know, somebody could have, you know, the, the guy right behind me on from day one, if he just if he caught a hundred inches, which is definitely doable. Um, you know, he, 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 he could have done it, but, uh, I, it was just meant to happen. And I just had this feeling all week that, that this was going to happen. I don't know why I, uh, I lost four fish that probably were over 20 inches, uh, th this tournament. And it didn't even phase me. Cause I, I was just like, I just gotta just get cast it out there again. There's another one. Keep grounded. There, there were so many fish in there. Um, it, it, yeah. It, I'm a little bit bummed because it, it was probably I don't know if I'm ever going to have an opportunity like that again to to break a hundred inches in a day and I, I fell short of that, but uh, you know it. You yeah. will. Well, you don't, will. Don't, don't dwell on that, man. You had an unbelievable tournament. That, yeah. You know. Come on. The only thing I think you should have done different is that when you got out, y'all went and moved to the Combe, man. You should have ordered pizza. Had it delivered yep. over there. Yep. That's that's the thing, man. Like, when, you, when you got it and you just cut out early, order pizza. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Um, <laughs> Drew mentioned something that I think I should have done, um, you know, is he, he decided to go after a fish not with the Whopper Flopper because, uh, you know, he's got a better better hookup uh, ratio on, on that chatterbait. You're not going to lose him as much. So I think that's something maybe I probably could have done, but – Dude, it's a beaver. It's hilarious to sit there. Yeah. And top water is king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I bet you they probably would have bit almost anything with the way those fish were. So, yeah, you might, might could have tried a big single hook bait. And then you could have horsed them in a little bit. Because, you know, those top waters for those trebles, I'm so nervous. I have to, I take my time so <laughs> much. And yeah. you, you just, it takes forever. But when once I got them on chatterbait, largemouth or smallmouth, it's like they're coming right in, man. Like 30 pound braid. I don't really mess around with them so travis one question on the beaver i know what bait you're talking about do yeah. you have or did you see that they also have that bait in a wake version that's it, not a plopper i i did see it and, and i like stared at them both for a while like okay which one do i want to get both um, yeah yeah i'm gonna <laughs> get the other go back and get the wake bait as well uh yeah it look it looks sweet that's awesome I'm just, I, I literally just heard about that bait like three days ago. I think watching one of uh, Christine's videos. Yeah. Cause I thought she was making like a joke. Mm -hmm. And so I just Googled it and was like, holy shit, that's actually something. And now <laughs> you're like, yo, that was my day. So that's awesome. Yep. All right. Well, it's getting late. We've hold, held y'all up. I know y'all might be on East Coast time too, but I know Catherine is for sure. So uh, th thank y'all for staying up with us. Uh, we appreciate it. This is a good yeah. show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But before we let you go, we always want to give you a chance to shout out anybody that makes fishing easier for you. Catherine, we'll start with you. How's that Hobie going from the native from Ship Happens to the Hobie? Are you <laughs> I love my, I love the Hobie and it's, uh, I don't miss pulling weeds out of the propel drive at all, but I love, uh, I love the fins. It's been a real good boat for me and, um, very stable. I spent a lot more time standing up and moving around than, than I was able to before. And, and it's, it's a lot faster. So I'm, I'm having a good time with that. And, and, uh, you know, I just want to say thanks to Hobie just, I love the Hobie Bass Open Series. It's so much fun. And 
just a chance to compete against just amazing anglers on an amazing fishery and, and, and challenge myself. And it's just, just everything about it is makes it special. So I, they do such a great job. And uh, I just want to say that. Does too, Drew, if you didn't know What's that. that? What was that? Armando does too. Oh yeah. Last, yeah. Oh so yeah. We, it was another podcast where we were talking about. Oh that. yeah. Catherine, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I missed what you said. So anyways, uh, yeah. So Hobie and um, I, you know, I, I'd like to just say thanks. Thanks to them. And, and, um, and Omnia Fishing, I, I, I'm an ambassador for them, and I, I just really enjoy working with them. They're, they're really good with their customer service and, and their approach to sort of fishing by lakes. Super helpful when you're going to places you've never been and you're trying to figure out how to, how to approach and break it down. So um, I've really, I really just, I just feel just blessed with all of this, man. Like I've had like the, the best time fishing like <laughs> like it's ridiculous i by day two man i was like singing songs and catching fish and i mean there's just like no better way to do a tournament it's just having a good time and and i'm just so very thankful to just ha be able to do this right now like just and thank you guys for having me on to chat i love chat and with these guys and it's a dream come true. And congratulations, Drew, for, yeah. for beating me. <laughs> hey, <one laughs> and spot. Travis. Just, uh, I'm going to keep working on this goal, Drew. So Yeah, there yeah. you go. What, 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 what's your go-to song out in the water? Is that like an old sea shanty or is it like... <laughs> like She's out there singing you know, Tupac, like man. Katy Perry um, War. Or, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's Here for a Good Time by George Strait. There you go. All right. All right. Yeah. I like yeah. it. That's good. Yeah. All right, Drew, how about you, man? Well, you know, I never would have dreamt when, when Kate said that her goal was to beat myself and I can Ellie that I would had to get second place to accomplish that. So, <laughs> I mean, big congrats to Kate on, on that. That's amazing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just, and I can't believe I ended up here as well. So, um, but by the way, I agree with Armando, no doubt about it. Hobie is the, oh, oh, the yeah. best. I mean, I, we were playing devil's advocate with him, but it's, it's the most well-run, you know, they have it dialed. I mean, it really is. It's, it's an incredible trip. Not that the other ones aren't like really that far behind. And I don't, you know, we don't fish, I don't fish tournaments because of some little minor reasons one trail might be doing something a little bit smoother better than the other i just fish them because i love fishing and the locations and the payouts and the camaraderie with the people so they're all doing a great job but anyway i agree um because here's a good example i got out of 73 anglers that ended up in this event which was the lowest attendance i think for hobie bos this year i'm shocked because champlain's like a destination how in the world were more people not here trying to beat the heat down south i don't know what what happened but Cause that place is amazing. I mean, you see it on Bassmaster elite series. I'm shocked, but either way, 73 anglers, I got second place and won 2450, I think 2,500 bucks basically. Okay. And the entry fee was what? $250 or 260, something like that. Now at the bass championship in, you know, Texas, I ended up in fourth place out of 150 with a $400 entry and a championship on the Bassmaster classic stage and won 2000. So it's not too, that, so Armando's right. I mean, it's definitely, uh, you know, we'd like to see some, some changes over there, but they paid out 30 places and Hobie pays out 10%, whatever. That's again, we'll get to that more on the OG show and other, other arguments with, with everybody, but, um, tune in for part yeah, three, yeah, part three, <laughs> round, <laughs> round three. But, um, Anyway, the Hobie, Hobie uh, Bass Open Series is awesome, like Kate said. They do a great job, and, and AJ and Steve, and I mean, they're, they're, put, they're doing it right. If you're going to do something, my dad always said, right, if you're going to do something, you know, do it right, Drew. Hobie is doing the, the series, and they're doing it right. So they're following that, that you know, mantra, and I'm appreciative of that. I know all the anglers are as well. They're as consistent as can be. You get texts from AJ the second he's got, you know, he's, he judges your fish and there's a crack this big in your mouth and you didn't even see it. And he texted me and I'm like, yeah, I got another photo. I'll send it to you. It's, it's unreal how like on things they are. So I do appreciate that. and want to thank them for all their hard work. And then for me, you know, like obviously I've got um, a lot of sponsors and been fortunate to, um, 
in the industry to have a lot of partners and a lot of support. But I just want to thank, um, you know, Crescent Kayaks. Uh, a lot of you guys out there know I've got a new model coming out um, here pretty soon. It's it's getting closer, so it's happening. Trust me, it's it's happening. Probably a couple, two, three months here, but uh, it's happening. And uh, so be on the lookout for that. And then uh, Real Tree Fishing is uh, like my main headline sponsor in the in the fishing world. So I really appreciate them and all their support. And then Z-Man Lures, I, I always want to thank them as well. Uh, but on this trip, seriously, that Benny Branches paddle, uh, the Yak Attack accessories, all, all that was like really, really critical as well. So in my 13 fishing rods and reels in the Cortland line worked amazing. So that's all I'll say for now. If you guys want to follow along with Drew Gregory fishing, I, I try to do the best I can on social media and, and keep folks up to date on these tournaments and uh, other photos and videos and, and just fun stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And just obviously thanks to my family for being there with me and, and having, having them at the results was super special. I'll never forget Lake Champlain. It's always going to have a, a special place in my heart, even though it wasn't, you know, a first place finish, but man, you know, like I said, having Travis win and, and, you know, me help have being a part to help him continue to fish or that inspiring him or whatever, that's, that feels like a win as well. So it's pretty cool, man. And Kate, people can follow you on YouTube. Is it Kate fishing? Yeah, it's Kate fishing. And I could use some subscribers, so please. <laughs> yeah. No. Hey. Uh, shameless people. plug. No, yeah, no. Shameless plug. Yeah, uh, good. YouTube, Go follow it. her stuff. Her videos yeah, are great. I, I released the day one of uh, the Lake Champlain tournament today, and I'm going to try and get day two out tomorrow. So, ta-da. <laughs> it's nice. a lot of work. Yeah. 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 Later. I'm going to go I subscribe know. right now. I need to do that. All right. I appreciate that, guys. Yeah. yeah. It's a Travis, lot of work. How about you, man? Uh, I don't have any sponsors. Uh, so, you know. If Who makes that beaver? Holla at you, boy. Berkeley. I need, I need to go get, get Berkeley. Yeah. Be like, hey, man, people are buying this beaver up because of me. I can talk about it. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Jackson, folks at Jackson. Uh, Your boy I, is taking that boat out there and flipping it and still yeah. cashing checks. Give him a give him a holler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was on their uh, their regional fishing team uh, for a couple years. Um, oh, I, I didn't feel like I, I was really doing doing my end of the deal there very well. So I uh, back kind of at the end of once the River Brassen Trail ended, you know, I, I guess I was kind of lost for a little bit. I didn't really know what to do after that. Um, so I, I didn't feel like I was really fishing as much to really. Um, you know, really stay on the regional team there. But anyways, yeah, maybe I'll reach back out to Jackson. Yeah, uh, they may reach out to you, sir. Yeah. They might reach out to you. <laughs> maybe. Um, but no, I'll just thank, uh, thank all my friends and family. I got a lot of support, uh, you know, from, from yeah, friends, family, other fishermen out there. Um, you know, definitely thank Drew and, and Kate for, for, for pushing me, you know, this weekend, you know, <laughs> I was watching the board below and, you know, anyway, <laughs> like, ah, you know, they're coming, they're all coming after, so, uh, so congrats to you guys, and uh, and th thanks for the opportunity to come on here and, and talk about it. Yeah, man, I'm sorry I had to keep you from your uh, beer league volleyball. Oh no, it's all <laughs> the stories were worth it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thank y'all. Y'all have a good night, and uh, yeah, true. I guess everybody's uh, Kate's going to make AOY TOC. Drew's uh, Drew's you you're already in it. And Travis, or is everybody fishing at TOC then? Yeah. Yeah. I got qualified, so. That's right. You I'm, qualified too. Okay. I'm gunning for the AOI now. Uh-oh. Watch out. Watch out, you mean. <laughs> Do you I need to pull this? Watch out, Ewing. <laughs> you no, need to pull just, it out. I'm, I'm joking, man. I'm joking. He, he had to get up. His, he's on the hot seat now. Is this, what you're, oh. is this what you're looking for, Kate? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Not going to yeah. give it up easy. I know, no. no. Two hands, tiki, tiki Barber. Remember, two hands. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he had his fumbling problems. Drew, girls got to have some hey. dreams, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Hey, we'll see. I think you're more than capable. I think you're definitely uh, capable. It's and I would down. love to see it happen and just have you two back on the show. I, I'm That'd thinking cool. I might, I might be able to break in the top ten. This. If they adjust it, I'm gonna be close. So we'll see. We'll see. This was my third. I've got a fourth and a uh, now a second, and then I had a a, a bad forty sixth event. And yeah, I better get. Up. I better kick it well, up a notch. You, you, you did get second. You did get second on uh, the KBF on Pickwick earlier this year. So you, you might do all right on Pickwick <laughs> for the Hobie. Uh, well, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do Pickwick on the Hobie. I might. We'll see. But uh, what I. 
Yeah, no, Drew, I'm gonna do, Drew, I'll I'm see you at Pickwick. Pick, we'll see you at Pickwick. <laughs> we'll Drew. see. We'll see. There's, <laughs> it depends. It all is going to depend on how I do on the Susquehanna and lacrosse. Because if I have a good finish, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's all coming down to the TOC because here's, I'll tell you how it's going to play out right now. We're going to have probably t- last year really was only like a few people that had a chance to really win the AOI. It was like Russ, Jody, myself, maybe can't remember who was below me, but it was really, really just us three that really probably had a, a good shot at it. The odds are heavily in one of our us three's favors, but this year it's totally different. There's going to be about eight to 10 people who are v- very, have pretty much almost this very similar scores you know what i'm saying most most likely the way it's playing out it's going to be so it's really going to come down to whoever just finished his highest at the toc is going to win it you know what i'm saying uh so that's why i fished the bass ufala event earlier this year right oh, cool. so i wanted to go ahead and get a little head start and trying to figure out that, <laughs> that, that lake so now i'm glad i did because i made it in the toc and i'll, I'll be seeing you guys there let's do it <laughs> all right well, we, we appreciate y'all thank y'all for being on good luck the rest of the year and uh yeah, we'll, we'll see y'all out there. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Uh, oh, wrong person. You kicked me out. Oh, my bad. All right. Good so, show. Yeah, great show, man. So, Love uh, all those people. Uh, since we're running late, we'll, we'll do a little bit of an abbreviated version of some tournaments this week. What, what, what you got, Jimmy? Well, I grabbed a couple. Uh, this first one stood out to me. Uh, the Ontario Kayak Bassmasters. Uh, it's the uh, Bass Nation Kayak Qualifier up there in Ontario. And we did a show with those guys, and it was awesome. So uh, they had 47 anglers. Uh, Michael Blumhagen, we'll go with that. Wow. Uh, took that win with 83 and a quarter. Matthew Hine with 82 and three quarter for second place. And Paul Winkle with 78 and a quarter for third, which 83, you know, that's a, you know, kind of low for five fish, but you know, until uh, last year, I didn't know that they bass fished in Canada. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, moving on, we got the natural state kayak anger, kayak anglers in the Las Fajitas North Beaver event. Love that. Uh, 43 anglers. Kyle Long took the win there, 88 and a half. Clay Johnson second with 82 and three quarters. Mr. Dwayne Beatty with uh, third place, 78 and a half. Uh, moving on from there, we had Moyak on Truman Lake. They had 82 anglers. Chad Davison with the win there with 87 and a quarter. Dorman Huey with 86 for second. And Brandon Prince with 82 for third. Oh, Lord, and I just closed all my windows. I just oh, saved no. It. No, we're good. I saved it. <laughs> uh, last but not least, the West Virginia Kayak Anglers, they were on, I think this was uh, public waters, all public waters in West Virginia. They call it the Weekender. Uh, they had 30 anglers for that. Mark Edwards got the win with 91. Jason Mark. Stauffer, 88 and a half for second. And Travis Harper with 87 and a quarter for third. So congrats to those guys. And we're sorry that, wow, the background changed. That's awesome. I wasn't ready for the green explosion in the background. Green explosion. Boom. Looks like a Mountain Dew ad. Yeah. But uh, congrats to those guys. And sorry if we missed any. Uh, me and Dan were both busy. And we both thought each other got the tournaments covered. And we didn't. So I threw it together there at the end. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Well, great show. Ooh, wait. Private chat. Did I miss that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank y'all, as always. Thank you for listening. For real. That's, uh, you know, we do this just to get people on and, you know, give them a chance to talk about their tournaments and highlight people from all over the country. And, and we, and we I, really do appreciate y'all listening. We, we, yeah. we don't say that enough. No. Appreciate the listeners. Another plug just for kate love kate love drew love all these guys make sure you go follow their stuff uh, I'm, I'm thinking about doing some changes where we start posting that stuff on the social media to you after our shows just to help these folks out because they put in a w- lot of work i mean the fishing's fun and everything but there's a lot more to it uh and the last thing i'm gonna say is like take her at the bottom or something yeah yeah last thing i'm gonna say is uh got a different show next week so Make sure y'all tune in next week. And then I'm going to start just a little bit of drama next week. Just a little. Just just a little. Dun, dun, dun. Ba, ba, ba. All right. Well, 
Good night, everybody. Take us out, Dan. Where are your PFDs? Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle in Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle in Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle in Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler Button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com.